Hey everybody, Suze here from Revelation Quilts. I think I've discovered the most versatile block in the world. There are so many ways that you can lay this block out. I'm gonna show you all the ways that I discovered and I know you'll discover many more. But first, let me show you how to make the block. Let's get started. Okay, take a look at this block. This is the block we are going to make. And I think this is the most versatile block in the world or at least in the quilts that I have made so far. So let me show you how to make this block. I'm going to try to be very specific in my instructions. I really um, did a lot of practice blocks for this block and I want to I want you to be successful in making it too so I will show you exactly how I did it to have the least amount of waste and to have a successful block at every time because there are some weird angles in here. So let's get started with this. The first thing you will need is two five inch squares. And it. Uh, I decided to go through my, my scrap stash and I chose five inch squares that were either solid or that, that had a print small enough whereas from far away they would read as a solid. So the first thing we're gonna do is just we're gonna make a standard half square triangle, half square triangles with these. So you'll just put them right sides together and then we will take a ruler and draw a line down the middle. Just your standard half square triangles. And then we are going to sew a quarter inch on each side of that half square triangle. So let me get that sewn real quick. So here I've got my half square triangles and now I'm just, or my, my line with the seams down each side of this line. And now I'm just going to cut that right on the line that I drew. So I will end up with two half square triangles and I'm just going to press those to the dark side. And so let me get those ironed real quick. Super easy so far, we can do this. And now I'm going to square these up so that they are squared to four and a half inches. So I'm just going to take my ruler with the 45 degree line and I'm just going to put that right on the seam line, making sure that it is within the four and a half inches. And I'm just going to trim that so it's nice and even. And then I will turn it over and do the same thing. And that will also get rid of those dog ears. So you'll have a nice straight four and a half inch half square triangle. And this is really important because we will be using this line um, and our four and a half inches measurement to square it up as we go along in this process. So you want to square both of those up. And this will give you two blocks for your quilt. And so you'll just spread them out within your quilt top. So the colors are nice and even. This is a scrappy project, but it certainly doesn't have to be. If you have some like a, um, a charm pack or if you want to cut these from yardages, it's just time for me to make another scrap quilt. So that is what I decided to do. Let me get rid of my little scrappy pieces here. Okay, now let's move on to the next step. Now the next thing you'll need is some two and a half inch black strips and you can use a jelly roll. You can cut these out of whatever source you want. So if you have some leftover layer cakes, you can use those. I happen to cut mine from yardage. I just cut some two and a half inch strips from my yardage and I am going to cut these into five inch lengths. So let me get the edges trimmed off there. And I'm just going to cut a bunch of these at once so that I actually have two strips folded and lined up together. So I'm getting four uh, two and a half by five inch strips every time I cut. Just got them all lined up here. And I'm just gonna cut a bunch because I'll need uh, one of these strips for each block. Um, how many you cut really just depends on how many blocks you have and how big your quilt is, but you can just cut as many as you need. I can get one more cut out of here. So you would need one of these for each block. So now 
in this block, I'm looking at where this line is and I'm going to take my little ruler and it doesn't matter if you have the light on top or the bottom, I can turn it over and start this way. But along the top of your block, whichever orientation you decided to put it, to put it I'm going to measure one inch in, starting at the top, and I'm gonna take whatever marking utensil works best. Now I have three of them here. I have a regular mechanical pencil. I have a white chalk one, and I also have a red pencil that's, it's a cloth marker that's red. This works really good on the black. This is a washout pencil. And so I'm just gonna measure one inch in from the top, and I'm just gonna put a little red line there, as you can see. And now I'm gonna take my black two and a half by five inch strip, and I'm going to start at the corner that's closest to me, the bottom corner. I'm gonna line that up at the corner. The corner of my black strip goes right along the corner of my block of my half square triangle. And then I'm just going to make it so the top kisses that line right up at the top, just like that. And I'm going to take this over to my machine and sew a quarter inch down this side right here. Okay, so here you can see I've sewn that down. You can see my, my stitch line right there. Hopefully I've, I have like a cream colored fab, cream colored thread in there. And now I'm just going to take my ruler, actually I think I'll use this one, and I'm just going to put just cut right along the edge of that. So I'm putting my quarter inch line on my ruler right along the seam and I'm just cutting this excess off because we don't want to have additional bulk there. And now I'm just gonna peel this back and I'm gonna press this just like that. It's gonna look a little weird and wonky, but when I press it and bring it back, that is what it is going to look like. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna pay attention to that 45 degree line that we used earlier. And I'm just going to put that along the same seam line there. Got my four and a half here, my four and a half here, and my 45 degree line here. And I'm just going to cut straight up this side the long way like so, so I'll have a little piece like that. And then I'm gonna cut across the top like that, that goes away. And now I'm back to my original four and a half inch square, just like that. So that's what your piece is gonna look like now. But before I even take my ruler away, I'm going to look along the side here where I've just cut and one inch down from the top, I'm gonna take my red pencil, since it looks really good on the black, it stands out real nice, and I'm just gonna mark right along there. And you can see that really well on the black. And now I'm going to take this same piece, I'm gonna turn this to the side, I'm gonna take this same piece, and see it's not, it's not really any recognizable shape, but I'm going to turn it over and if you look at this piece, this, this side sticks out more, like it's more pointy. I'm going to use that along the, the bot, which is now the bottom now where I made the mark. And I'm gonna line up these corners up here. So they're, they're, they're touching perfectly right there. And I'm just gonna spin it so it just kisses that line. And now I'm going to sew a quarter inch down this line. So there you go. Now I've sewn my line right there and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my ruler, put my quarter inch line right along that stitching there, cut off the excess, and then press this back with my iron. And now I've always got my, my diagonal going the same way here. Now I'm gonna take my ruler back here put my diagonal line right on the seam line like before. Three of the sides should be perfect. And now I'm just going to cut the excess off the side and across the top, just like that. This is waste. And there I have my 
beautiful block just like that so again like I said I made a lot of practice blocks of this because I would have things at weird angles and it wouldn't line up right the reason I know this one's right is because when I look when I follow this line up it goes exactly where these two black lines cross so that's how I know I've got mine exactly where it needs to be and some of them were off by like a millimeter but that's okay in the grand scheme of things nobody's really going to notice that little millimeter that it's off but when I was experimenting it with it some were way off and that's how I knew that um, I didn't have it right so follow if you follow my directions exactly keep the orientations exactly as I have them um, once you get a couple under your belt the rest it's just muscle memory and it goes really really well with the minimal amount of waste so but the best part about this block is the variety of the ways that you can lay it out so let's take a look at those that I chose to go with. I think it is kind of wonky and I like that about it. All the colors just pop out. I ended up putting a three inch border, black border around the edge and I'm going to add another border to make it even, uh, even a little bigger. This is the fabric I'm going to use for the outer border. It's just like a little uh, hot pink plaid and I think that's gonna look really neat around the edge and then I will again bind it in the black fabric. Now I enjoyed this process so much that I decided to make another one and I'm going to show it to you right here. Now if you'll notice on this one, instead of starting with a half square triangle, I just started with a white charm square and then I used my scrap fabric to make the little wedges on each side. And I love the way this one turned out. I put two black borders on with a little piano key border in the middle. So there's so many possibilities with this. And I really hope that you enjoy making it as much as I do. So take a look at both of these. And I just really think that this is the most versatile block ever. There's so many designs that are possible that I didn't even think of. So I encourage you to play with this and to make it your own. Thank you to all of my subscribers. If you like this video, give it a good thumbs up and then we'll just be on our way to make even more. So thanks for letting me show this to you. It was super fun to make. Have a great day and keep on sewing. Stay creative.